All right, guys. So in this video, we're gonna work on the uh, the microphone here, which is a retro old microphone from World War II era. So uh, we're gonna start off with something simple, which is gonna be a sphere, and we're gonna use a hemisphere. As you can see in the properties, we used 0.5%, uh, and uh, we are reducing the, the number of, of polygons and uh, the uh, the the height of this hemisphere because it's gonna be a little bit flatter. And um, yeah, this is going to be a basically our starting point for creating the uh, the microphone. And uh, we deleted the base because it wasn't necessary and uh, it wasn't something that we needed. And we're going to use the edge extrusion method in order to start extruding some edges. So uh, you're going to keep holding shift all the time. And as you can see, I'm trying to create some uh, some details underneath the base of the microphone. And um, yeah. It's not going to be that complicated. It's very simple. This is a very humble start. So let's get going. So I'm going to go to the front or the side viewport and we're going to start creating additional stuff. So this is going to be a simple box. Try to put it in the center. Use the alignment tool to align it perfectly on top of the, um, of the hemisphere we created previously. And of course, you can control the height and change the uh, where where this is going to be depending on when you, where, where you want it to be. Also, um, there are probably a few things you can change and uh, we can start adding right now. Line, we can add line. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is kind of uh, a way of trying to add more details as we go. And as you can see, uh, we are trying to add these edges and uh, yeah, we will extrude this one. Uh, use the extrude tool and extrude it just a little bit it's gonna be just a few uh, few millimeters probably depending on depending on what your unit of measurement is all right so um yeah feel free to modify and adjust the position of the vertices however you want and as you can see right now i'm creating another uh, box that is going to be on top of the other one and in order to get this one in the right place we're going to use uh, we use the option that we call uh, it's uh, it's it's an option that allows you to create on top of these surfaces, and um, it's the grid option that is, that you're gonna find on top. Anyways, so uh, what you can see here is um, is is gonna be actually the head of the microphone, and it is the most important piece I would say because. Uh, it's going to be the most com the most and the and kind of the most the, the most complicated piece uh, we're going to work on and uh, we used the um, we used the the base as a starting point because i believe it's um, uh, it's always a smart thing to do to use pieces or polygons that you already have in order to uh, gain some time or kind of avoid repetition and stuff like these and you can adjust these pieces as you uh, as you go and as you make more progress or depending on what you need so um yeah it's um uh, it's, it's a good thing actually to use uh, things that you created previously and as you can see we're trying to adjust it um in in the proper way in order to fit what we have in mind or what we, what the uh, the the reference image actually is telling us to do so uh, we're trying to follow these reference images and by the way if you want to find reference images um, low poly model and uh, uh, some of the alphas i use in order to create my, my my 3d models and work on my projects go please go to patreon and support and yeah your your support is not required but it is very highly appreciated and i want to thank those who support me already it's uh it's an honor and uh, it means a lot to me and it shows me that uh there is sincerity and um there are people who actually uh put their kind of um kind of put the effort and the money to support a cause that they believe in and um, i really appreciate that and i'm and i'm very lucky and thankful for those who uh who do this for me all right anyways as you can see here we are trying to uh create more details and the thing is i'm keeping hold um, i'm holding shift all the time here because um we are working with the edge extrusion method and uh, this is the method that i like working uh with the most 
because it's effective and it gives you more, more it gives me more control and um, as you can see here um, we are trying to extrude this area here we are kind of giving it um, a few millimeters of height because as I said before this piece here is probably All right, so as I said before, this piece here is going to be uh, a little bit complicated and um, there are going to be uh, certain things we're going to do here. that are going to be uh, remarkably uh, interesting compared to the other pieces. All right, here also we're going to go to the top and try to um, change some things uh, for example um, for example here we're trying to um, probably add um, we'll, we'll probably add um, a piece here that is gonna be a kind of a label on top and this piece here is gonna be um, extruded so we're probably gonna detach it as you can see here as uh, as an element and and uh, it's a good idea. Uh, this is also a way of using existing polygons and pieces in order to uh, move forward. And uh, the, the, the good thing about this method of working is that it saves you time. Also, it gives you accuracy and it's kind of uh, reduce the, um, the amount of time and energy you spend trying to kind of uh, position your pieces uh, ex exactly where you want it to be. So this way, you're gonna you're gonna save the alignment and the correct position you need so here we're trying to add few details we are trying to add um, two or three lines or two uh, two on each end and um, in order we, we're doing this because uh, this piece here uh, it, it kind of has borders and we want to extrude these borders using these uh, these these are by the way not support edges we are not uh, we have not reached that point yet, so this is just a way to create some extra details and some borders on the edges. So this this border is is very very subtle. The height is not that um, it's not that clear. So as you can see here, we are trying to uh, now add um, additional pieces and uh, we're going to go to the back and um, create, probably change the height of the base a little bit because uh, I figured that um, the, um, because since we are going to create a piece that is going to be in the back and um, we need to actually give it some space and uh, kind of a flat surface in order to lean against uh, since uh, it's going to be awkward and it's going to make a uh, weird looking uh, combination if we don't do this. At least this is what I think about right now. So, uh, so as you can see, uh, we are trying to put this in, on the, in the back. And this is basically where the, the cable um, is going to be plugged. So um, this cylinder doesn't have to be high resolution or something of that sort because, because it doesn't really matter how this is, gonna, is going to look. And um, uh, since it's not going to be seen, it's, it's not going to be that visible, this is what I wanted to, uh, this is what I wanted to say. And um, the um, the details here uh, matter, but um, the, we don't want to take it to the nth level because you need to be realistic and you need to actually consider um, 
some factors when you model that you when you create a model your models and uh, you're going to focus on the things that there are that are going to be visible the most and this is how you actually create you can create something um, beautiful and, and efficient so i just detached the um the head of the microphone or kind of the interface of the head of the microphone because i needed to uh, i need a little bit more control over uh, what I could see when, or, or what I could not see and um, this way we're gonna be able to work uh, we're gonna we're gonna actually have an easier time working on this All right, right now we are creating uh, using a box in order to create uh, this thing is that you can see here and it's going to be in 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 the front so uh, this is actually something that is going to be detached from the uh, the interface or the uh, the head of the microphone but uh, it's going to be a very important thing to do in order to give it the details uh, we are creating uh, when it comes to this part which is basically is going to be um, uh, what we what the viewer is going to focus on and uh, what it is going to be the most visible the visible thing that you're probably going to see so um, as you can see here we're trying to modify it a little bit um, it's not a good idea actually to attach it to to the main geometry of the uh, of the microphone but um, yeah this this way actually we can keep things simpler and clean and uh, we're gonna have way more control over it and um, yeah if we attach it it's gonna be a mess so as you can see here we are trying to create a nice curve that is gonna be on uh, on the round area of the um, of that surface and um, we will try to integrate it nicely and smoothly so uh, it's, we're gonna make a cool walking transition so we're gonna copy uh, the uh, these pieces uh, a few times, depending on um, how this is gonna look, and uh, probably we're going to, as you can see here, copy it a few times. And um, yeah, uh, I think this is gonna be uh, very good looking once we uh, once we finish it. So I just borrowed a few polygons from the center. Just keep only shifting, copy them, then detach them, as you can see. And this piece here uh, is going to be uh, in front and uh, we're going to give it thickness using, using the uh, shell modifier and and as you can see uh, we're going to convert it also to um, uh, we're going to select every second polygon uh, every second edge because we don't really need them since this is going to be a little bit too much. Okay, so we inserted um, those polygons a little bit and we we're trying to push them to the inside because um, this is um, this is what we are supposed to do. Okay, this text is going to be typed inside the... Um, inside the cylinder we, we created lately and it's going to be just one letter uh, is going to be in there uh, we can do it here in 3ds max we can actually create it as a floating geometry or we can create it later in substance painter so uh, i'm going to show you probably both ways so uh, as you can see here you can create it um, the letter r i don't know what that stands for but i think it is um, uh, something meaningful to a certain extent probably this is uh, as you can see here the problem with adding uh, these uh, texts and letters in, in 3ds max is um, it's not going to be perfect because uh, there are going to be um, so many edges and so many 
polygons for a single letter uh, we we basically we're basically treating it as if it is geometry but if we do it in substance painter it's going to be way more easier so i just created an arc and uh, this one here is going to be attached to uh, to these pieces as you can see we're going to create just two on each side Of course, we need to uh, control a little bit. As, as you've seen, I reduced the number of sides to four only because this is how it's supposed to look like. So uh, right now, we will um, try to align these, these vertices uh, vertically, and we're going to try to put them in the right position. Uh, also, you can keep it inside. You can keep them overlapping because... Um, uh, Perfect alignment sometimes is not perfect. So we it's okay if we kind of leave these pieces overlapping. It's not that big of a deal. Right here, this cylinder is going to be. Um, um, we, we are trying to reduce the, the number of sides to something less than if we are creating uh, something big. So, also, we're going to delete uh, probably lots of these, uh, uh, lots of these polygons on top and in the bottom. And uh, as you can see, I'm using the edge extrusion method, keep holding shift all the time in order to create the nice shapes I'm creating here. Uh, also, uh, the move tool and scale tool are extremely important. So, uh, what I'm trying to create here is going to be a piece that controls, uh, actually turns on and turns off the mic. So, uh, there are going to be a few details here and um, it's, it's not going to be that kind of complicated, but uh, it's, it's going to be a nice addition to what we are doing here and uh, yeah it's a, it's a cool piece that is going to break some of the uh, uh, kind of simple surfaces that are uh, all over the place uh, and uh, it's going to make it look cooler All right, right now we are detaching um, a few polygons because we want to create floating geometry. We're going to add, as you can see, uh, we are adding some uh, some edges in order to make sure that um, this is going to be way smoother. And of course, uh, this way we're going to make sure that we are getting enough polygons in order to create the details we want to create. And you can select all the polygons that you uh, select every second one, and we're going to extrude them. All right, uh, you can extrude them just, it's going to be very subtle. We don't want to extrude them too much because it's not going to make lots of sense because this is going to be floating geometry and um, it's going to be baked into the normal map. So we're going to rotate this piece here a few degrees and kind of put it on the surface on just a little bit in in order to uh, prevent any weird looking kind of uh, 
empty spaces in between these two surfaces. So uh, what we're doing right now is uh, uh, I'm kind of connecting uh, some vertices because I want to create some holes that are going to be um, in the uh, microphone and um, uh, this is going to be a filter that filters audio and uh, you know this stuff, microphones, old mi especially old microphones uh, were going to very... Um, it's, it's, it was very uh, apparent and it's, it's gonna it was very uh, very visual and uh, it's kind of something that you're gonna find in all old vintage microphones so uh, we, we try here to create multiple uh, multiple circles and kind of extrude them uh, negatively uh, to the inside and delete the uh, the background you can keep it though but um, uh, I suggest you keep it because um, you're going to need it because um, uh, especially if these holes are going to be bigger it's gonna, you're going to see inside if you zoom in and it's going to look weird and stuff or you can actually not create them in the first place and um, uh, in the low poly I mean uh, in the low poly is going to be totally different so uh, right now I'm trying to create other um, two other circles and these are going to be uh, serving the same purpose um, and uh, because we are probably going to create two rows of, of these uh, of these holes and um, or these filters or whatever they are and uh, in order to do this of course we're going to chamfer some edges and create a proper kind of proper spaces to uh, kind of and, uh, connect these vertices and chamfer these uh, these vertices and um, create the the circles we are hoping to create. So we're gonna select these uh, vertices very strategically, and I hope you uh, kind of figure out the formula of uh, doing this. If you are not kind of familiar with these types of things, please feel free to kind of connect these vertices one one set by one set because if you don't understand uh, kind of the algorithm behind what I'm doing right now I suggest you do it step by step because you probably are going to make some mistakes All right, you chamfer these vertices, and by the way, it's not going to be perfect, so um, you can spend your time trying to make it uh, less less imperfect. And um, I hope you will be able to get a result that is similar to what you can see uh, in my computer. Right now we are using this line here, uh, uh, by the way I'm looking from the top viewport, uh, using this line I'm going to create a wire or a cable that goes through uh, from the back of the microphone to somewhere around the line on the, on the table we are creating it on, we are creating it on and um, this here is going to add, 
it's gonna add some nice good looking um, extra stuff that kind of make it look realistic and um, uh, make it look more more interesting All right, so what I'm trying to do here is kind of, I'm trying to soften some of the edges because they are too hard. And um, if they are kind of look broken like this, uh, imagine what is gonna happen uh, when we try baking it because the uh, the high poly, of course, uh, is in the high poly, we're gonna apply the turbo smooth modifier and the turbo smooth modifier is a very strong modifier that is gonna smooth everything even though if even if it is something that is very low poly but the low poly version is not going to follow if there are there is a severe lack in polygons so i'm a try, I'm, I'm trying to recompensate for this lack of kind of polygons early on and of course in order to get a cool looking bake the high poly and the low poly need to kind of go hand in hand so uh, probably this is uh, something I'm gonna work on later even more because simply because um, there is no other way than <clears throat> kind of matching the, uh, the the two versions of our model the low and the high probably I'm gonna add even more polygons later when it comes to creating the low poly version so this is the inner side um, of this cable We are, we are cre creating uh, some uh, cool looking details from the inside and uh, probably it's not going to be that visible but adding it is going to make things look more interesting especially if we take a close-up shot.
all right as i said before right now i'm gonna try to add even uh even more polygons because we need to kind of make things a little bit more smoother All right, so uh, for now we are we are creating the um, uh, we are creating <coughs> we're creating two versions and two layers, the high poly and the low poly, and uh, yeah, this is very important for um, what we usually do when it comes to creating game assets. So uh, right now I'm gonna work on the um, uh, on the support edges. So this process is highly repetitive and we have done so many times in the past uh, it's basically it's basically trying to it's basically trying to uh, support the edges that are supposed to be hard and keep the things that gonna be smooth um, be, kind of let them be affected by the turbo smooth modifier of course that we're gonna apply later so this process is going to be very basic probably i'm not going to talk too much here because it's highly repetitive and there aren't lots of things i can demonstrate or explain so uh, if you can create this, these types of models then uh, working on uh, working on support edges is not going to be a big of an issue
as you can see here the process of adding support edges is totally making our model look like it is um, upgraded and stuff so yeah it is uh, it is it is the thing that makes things look like they are jumping to the next level so you better do it properly
All right, so uh, for now we are working on the low poly version, and as you can see here, we're trying to uh, eliminate everything that is not going to be necessary in the low poly version. So uh, this is actually what we do when you're creating uh, the low poly version of any type of model, and um, it's going to be a very effective thing uh, to do in order to keep the uh, poly count low and um, you, you're gonna keep your your model efficient overall especially if uh, there are so many details and so many things and especially if it is detailed and small and actually the poly count depends on many factors one of the biggest determinant factors is um, how the game what's the game is gonna look like uh, whether it's first person shooter or third person or if it is uh, the prop or the kind of the um, the model is going to be a uh, hero, hero asset or it's going to be uh, just a part of a garbage piece of garbage or just um, a random piece in an environment in an environment that is uh, there's not something you're, you're going to focus on so um, it depends on the importance also there are some limits there is a range that uh, you can you can respect in order to um, create something acceptable and something that is that can run smoothly inside a game engine. So right now we're going to try to collapse lots of these uh, vertices and um, we're going to try to um, target well lots of these vertices manually. We're going to collapse lots of them so bear with me, because, bear with me here because um, this is not going to be um, something that we usually do, and um, yeah, it is something that we usually do, but not, not like this. So this is kind of interesting and tricky in the same time. All right, keep doing this until you reduce uh, the number of, of vertices that are not necessary to the minimum. There is actually no particular way of doing this, so try to do it uh, in a way that is kind of suitable for your for for your case. You don't even to you don't even have to create these holes in the same position that I did. So uh, also make sure that you're not kind of disrupting and destroying the uh, the harmony of the, uh, the the structure we are building here, and uh, you have to some from time to time take a closer look in order to identify probably some kind of some problems in the mess that kind of can happen because we are basically heavily modifying it. So these can happen anytime. That's why you need to be careful. Also, when it comes to this art, uh, as you can see, I'm gonna reduce uh, the uh, the poly count to half, delete every second one, and um, this should look interesting when we are done with it.
uh, in the end it seems like uh, I needed to collect the whole thing because um, these details are going to be um, kind of replaced by the Nome map that and then the other maps that we're going to bake later inside Section Screen 2. Also here, uh, some of these details from the inside need to be uh, need to go because they are not necessary. All right, we are collapsing some of the uh, polygons there and uh, in the back of the uh, plug. Also, when it comes uh, when it comes to this cable here, uh, we'll see later in the bake. If the bake looks good, then we're going to be happy with it. If not, probably we're going to go back and um, adjust it a little bit. All right, as you can see here, I'm uh, applying the uh, the smoothing uh, smoothing groups on the uh, the different pieces because we cannot apply anything else other than this in order to make it smoother. So, yeah, I think uh, this is gonna make it look closer to uh, what we want, and also uh, this is this will make it ready in order for kind of as if preparing these baking surfaces. So, um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this part and I hope you like this video and subscribe to, uh, to my channel if you're new. And yeah, thank you very much for sticking till the end of this part and hopefully I will see you in the next one.